<laughs> Welcome back to the Cabbage Patch. I'm Dad. I'm Tommy. And I'm Gus, all the way back over here. You probably can't see me well. Well, you should sit up so everybody can see you. All right, so today we played... Draco. 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 This one is Dragon and Dwarves. Uh, and it is a two-player game, which is why they're on this side of the couch. Uh, because they helped each other play as the dwarves. Um, it's an what they call an a, uh, asymmetrical dual game, right? So there's two players. One player in this game is this huge dragon. dragon. And then the other player controls these three dwarves. And the three dwarves have slightly different uh, sort of abilities, sort of. Uh, everybody can attack. Uh, it's, one of them can shoot arrows, and that's this crossbow guy. One of them can throw a net, and that's this guy who you probably can't see very clearly, but he has a net. Um, and one of them has a special ability that he can use once per game, which lets him take an extra action. So the game is divided into turns. Each turn, a player takes two actions, right? Right? And what are those two actions, Tommy? You can use a movement card to move. Right? You can, you can attack. No, the, the actions are you use a card. Use a card or draw or, cards. Or draw cards. So the way the game works is you've got this deck of cards which have specific effects on them. Some of them are attack cards, which you might be able to see. Some of them are, this one's got an arrow on it, which means the archer can shoot. Some of them are movement cards, which let you move one or more of your characters, one or more spaces. Um, and it's pretty straightforward from the card. Uh, a card that lets you move two dwarves has two feet on it, uh, if you can see that, which you may not be able to. Uh, if it only lets you move one dwarf, there's only one foot on it. Likewise, there's some double attacks in here. If there's two axes, two dwarves can attack at the same time. Um, and then the other thing that's on these cards is a shield. What's the shield do, Tommy? It blocks all incoming damage. It blocks all incoming da damage from a single and attack. Tommy, and Tommy hates it. And Tommy kind of hates it. It blocks all incoming damage from a single attack. So we take turns. Each turn takes two actions. The very first turn goes to the dragon, in this case. And he only gets one action on that first turn. So you start off by each each set of players gets four cards, right? Four cards. And you've got these little tiles in front of you that keep track of the health of your team. So this is the dragon's card. And this is the dwarf's card. And all three dwarves are on here. And each time a dwarf, each time a a successful attack is landed you take one of these little one or more blood drops blood drops right. and you put it on your damage trackers on the appropriate place with the dragon his damage tracker is special because he's got his armor up here at the top and then he's got special damage track for his uh, wings special damage track for his movement and special damage track for his fire breath right so all of the combat is either close close quarters, which means the characters must be next to each other, or in special cases, ranged. The crossbow guy can shoot arrows. The dragon, but only in a straight line, but only in a straight line through to a specific number of hexes. So you have to be lined up. The dragon can use his flame breath, and if there's more than one dwarf in a straight line, he ends up zapping both of them, and they have to defend against it. So. It's the curse of the dropping things. It's the curse of the dropping things. It happens. Right, it does happen. So the game ends when either all the dwarves are dead, the dragon is dead, or the dwarves run out of cards. Or the dragon runs out of cards. Uh, actually, it's the dwarves running out of cards because I don't think the dragon can ever run out of cards given there are fewer card dwarf cards as it turns out. I reread the rules. So, And what happens when the dwarves run out of the cards is this dragon who has been wreaking havoc but was injured and up in this mountain, flies away to another mountain. Um, the dwarves chase him off, but they don't. They don't destroy him, right? So I kind of won this so, scenario. Yeah, yeah. So you you chase the dragon away at the very least. Um, it takes about 20, 20 minutes or so to play. It's really short. It's really fast. And 
fun. And uh, I think it's a lot of fun. So the uh, special things that the dwarves can do, uh, other than shoot arrows, so this, this crossbow dwarf can shoot ranged attacks as long as he's got a straight line of hexes to him. This the, dude can use his special ability. What's that do? It gives him one more action. Once per turn he gets an extra action. And then if you draw a net card, you can use the net as an attack. And what that does is it mobilizes the dragon. And the dragon needs to rest an entire turn and not take any actions in order to get the net off. So the net's reusable. And that's it, right? Uh, you, you take turns, it goes really fast, and it plays really short. And in my, in, in my case, uh, the dragon guy. Yeah. So you played, when we, we played this, well, we'll talk about the other game. We'll, we played this three times today, basically. The first time Tommy played the dragon. And died. And died. So the trick to the dragon is to move around a lot, right? And then thus, thus and then, almost played the second thing. Yeah, and then the and second then time I we played, the, the the second time we played with the dragon, we switched sides, and you guys almost won. Right, and we're only I only had a few hit points left. Well, kind of won. Yeah, we and but the dragon off. chased off. Um, and that's it. Now the interesting thing is this game has a companion game called Draco. Knights. knights and Trolls, which has three knights and two trolls in it. So the knight figures are similar, and it's set up the same way. It's got a slightly different game board, but that's okay. We'll talk about that in a second. And two trolls, and the two trolls are as powerful as the dragon. And the knights have special abilities. They There's two archers that can, that can shoot arrows and one knight that can resurrect archers when they die. Uh, the trolls can charge at people from across the board or and throw trolls. rocks. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's a big monster against three quote-unquote good guys, a big monster against three quote-unquote good guys. And the beauty of these two sets is they can be combined so that you can have three knights against the dragon and three dwarves against the trolls. Or it can just be an all-out rumble. Or it can be... Trolls against the... Trolls against the dragon. Or troll against troll. Uh, no, you can't do troll against troll because it's only one... It's the, the troll card is, is a single card. Or knights against dwarves. Or it could be knights against dwarves. Or it so, could just be an all-out skirmish rumble thing. Yeah, I don't think you can have all four of them on here. The board's not big enough. It would, And you can't combine the two boards. But you can mix and match the characters, which is kind of cool. Which means that this game, we played it three times. We played two versions of the dragon and one version of the knights and trolls. And there's a lot of variety and interesting things that can happen on a really, really small game board. And it goes really fast. And I had a lot of fun. So what was a rule that we needed to remember while we were playing? You don't know. I it was it wasn't that complicated. How about you, Gus? Was there a rule we didn't think about while we were playing? Be the dwarves. Be the dwarves is not a rule to remember, but it's a good rule to be. It, being the dwarf, it is interesting. You get three. The dwarves are, I think, a little more powerful than the knights, but we've only played it a couple times. And I think they're much more powerful than the dragon because they have a minimal supply. Of, because it seemed when Dad played them as. The, they have a bottomless supply of defense cards. The dwarves are really good at defending. Um, the so knights are, are really so good are the at... Trolls are handy. So are the trolls. The knights are really... Well, the, no, the trolls, I didn't have very many defense cards at all. They were kind of crunchy. Um, <laughs> the knights uh, the knights are better at attacking. So that might be a thing to think. I think a thing to remember is, well, one, you've got this special ability, right? So when I played it as the dwarves the first time, I didn't even use my take another action token before my main dwarf got squished um and uh likewise with the knights mm -hmm. the free defense thing that you could have had with him or the resurrect your other guys 
uh, was a thing that was hard to keep track of. They do a pretty good job of letting you keep track of everything on the cards themselves, right? So the life tokens are right here. You put these special tokens right on the board, right over the spot that they are. But sometimes they're hard to see where they are, so you forget that they're there. Um, I think that the thing that we need to remember while we're playing it is the tactics for each faction, right? So the dragon is really good. He can fly. One of his one of his cards is to fly, and that means you can pick him up and you can put him anywhere on the map. And then you can do things like put him in line with a bunch of dwarves and then f flame breath on him. <laughs> right. Uh, otherwise, it was pretty straightforward. I had to look up. There's a couple of symbols that aren't entirely clear on the, the troll cards that I still don't know what they do um, in terms of their optional effects. But otherwise... Also, it's self-explanatory. That's just an extra piece. I don't know. It's self-explanatory. The cards, once you know what the symbols mean, are pretty pretty well straight out, uh, pretty well laid out. So I liked both of these games. Um, let's do a grade for the whole game, the whole set, both games, and then let's talk about if we like. Did we like? Actually, let's just talk about that now. Did you like one of the versions over the other? I like this one better. I they're equal. You think they're equal? I like the dragon one a little bit better. I think. Yeah. I think you're right, um, uh, because the dragon is one piece, so it really is an asymmetrical battle between one guy and three guys, versus the trolls and the one knights. Dragon for this one dwarf. dragon's for three dwarves. Yes, uh, versus the trolls and knights, which are you, know, you got two trolls, and it felt a little bit like it was just two factions, but uh, but it was still cool, and I still uh, they're still a lot of fun. And I think the knights and trolls, the symbols are a little less clear than the dragon one, but I love both of them. I thought they were a lot of fun, and they're great dual games, and they're really short. So, what? Uh, how many cabbages are we given? Draco. Three. three. Tommy's given it three cabbages. This is three. Really, you're giving it three too? That's well, one game. Well. Three for this one, two for the other one. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll go ahead and give them credit for the dragons and trolls. Three, so that's nine cabbages. Um, for dragons and dwarves. For dragons and dwarves. That's a lot. That's a lot of cabbage. So I assume you voted on voted a three too. Oh yeah, no, I liked. It. I thought it was a great fun. I thought it was great fun. Um, and the box has plenty of space to store all the things in in an appropriate way so that it's self-contained, unlike some of the other games where the um, the inserts aren't very good. The yeah. models, I think the models are awesome for, for basic game pieces or for what's supposed to be just basic game pieces. The detail on these plastic models is pretty awesome. I don't feel like I need and to go upstairs and find the D&D &D miniatures to replace these because these are just as good. And? And what? You, if you have both sets, you can mix and match these. Right, and that's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. My one complaint about the game is kind of the compact system because Dad seems to always have more, more be better <laughs> cards than me. Some of that might have been a shuffling thing. Some of that might be, I think that, again, with the dragon, the dragon needs to move around a lot. And you weren't moving your dragon around a lot. You were just sort of sitting in there and chomping on people. And the dragon needs to just jump up, go somewhere else, chomp on someone else. But that's it. That's the game. All right, so nine cabbages, eight if you count Gus's lower grade well, for the trolls. Well, technically, technically, it got eleven cabbages. No, it didn't get eleven cabbages. Yeah, because no. for this one, it got two. <laughs> yeah, the, but only two. So we're gonna treat them separately. So if we treat it separately, this got eight cabbages, and this got nine. Although Tommy and I think that they're both equal. Equal. I, I thought you agreed with me. No, no, I think it's, I think it's great. I think this, I think this is, I think Dragon is a little better than Knights and Trolls, but I'm not willing to lower my score because it's still a fun, fast game. So that's it. Uh, easy to understand. A lot of fun to play. Combat system is not my favorite. Really straight, it's really simple. It's really straightforward. You either hit or you don't, and you either block or you don't. And Dad seems to have a bottomless supply of, Okay, okay, we, yeah, we, we, yeah, we know we, that. We know that. That's the, uh, you, you're you're going to keep harping on the defense cards. Are you going to do the outro? Uh, I think we're done. Is there anything else we want to say about this game? Uh, what did you think of the dwarf models? They're neat. They're good. All of the models are pretty good. The All the models model are really good. Favorite. The dragon model is my favorite. When I first got it, I thought I was going to have to go upstairs and get a D&D &D miniature, but I don't think we need to because it's pretty cool. Maybe when we play Dungeons & Dragons 
the adventure begins and we do the dragon quest, we'll use this guy instead of the one that's on there, instead of the big card. Yeah. Because uh, this is a pretty good miniature. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Subscribe. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. You want to do the outro? Subscribe, like, hit that bell, Tommy. Leave a comment if you wish. Eat plenty of cabbages, not us. So. <laughs> And that's it. And thanks so much for watching. We'll put the playthroughs up uh, as well here shortly.